In June 2022, we released a video on how Lucy boosted her metabolism that took us by surprise when it blew up. What was more surprising though was all the controversial comments it got. While most of you related to her story, a few accused us of lying, saying that it's impossible to not lose weight on less than 1200 calories a day without breaking the law of thermodynamics and that what she experienced had to be fake. Yet we see similar stories from our audience all the time. So what's real? While usually negative comments don't bother us, this time the accusations hit a nerve and made us doubt ourselves. Well, if we don't explain this, our professional integrity is on the line. Well, how about if we can't find research back data for to explain all of this sufficiently, we tell everybody on YouTube that fine, you're right, we're liars. Ooh, raising the stakes. Yeah, I know. We're like, we're like, I'm serious about this. With our reputations on the line, we set out to investigate this and answer all these questions. Is it really possible to get to a point where 1200 or even 1000 calories per day isn't enough? to lose weight. How likely are you to experience adaptation while dieting? And if you do experience it, how much adaptation are we talking about? And finally, what to do about it? We're determined to figure out what currently is known about adaptation, its magnitude, and the chances that it would affect people personally. First things first, get caught up on existing research. So the common saying goes that when you restrict your calorie, your metabolism naturally begins slowing down. And the more you restrict your calories, the faster and greater the slowdown is. This can happen even if you try to strength train more to preserve muscle. Since slowdown can't be explained by either lean or fat mass loss alone, researchers call it adaptive thermogenesis or metabolic adaptation. All the rates vary for how long it takes before adaptation occurs. According to the study, the slowdown can happen even just two weeks into dieting, and the intensity may increase the greater the deficit and the longer you are in the deficit, with three to six months being a commonly cited range to start seeing higher adaptation rates. Now, when someone dramatically decreases calorie intake and their metabolism finally slows down such that calories in matches calories out, their weight loss stalls. And further calorie reduction results in more metabolic slowdowns Thus, a vicious arms race begins. When people hear this, they mistakenly believe that this means that calorie deficits don't work. That is absolutely not what I'm saying. First, there's no guarantee that metabolic adaptation will occur after two weeks for you. We have seen people who experience it after a few weeks, a few months, or not at all. And while there is a general trend towards larger calorie deficits causing greater slowdowns, there are no real ways to predict your risk. Second, as long as you're eating fewer calories than you're burning, you will see weight loss drop. The the calories out part of the equation can start slowing down, though it'll never get close to zero or else you'd be dead. So when calories in equals calories out, you can choose to reduce your calories even more or eat at a maintenance to rev your metabolism back up to baseline, then go back into a deficit again. Both can work. And that's the second myth to bust, that metabolic adaptation will ruin your metabolism and you can never get it back to normal after prolonged dieting. While metabolic adaptation is real, there is no evidence to support support metabolic damage. Most people psych themselves out when they conflate these two terms, so I want to set the record straight. Metabolic damage implies that your metabolism is impaired somehow after dieting, but we have found no research to confirm this is true. Several studies show that as soon as dieters eat more calories, their metabolisms go back up to pre-deficit rate again. Even in studies where people experience extreme metabolic slowdowns during dieting, they were still able to get back to pre-dieting rates within a year of eating at maintenance. In the most extreme cases, Case, a study of the biggest loser contestants claimed that their metabolisms were still impaired six years after losing weight. However, many of the participants might have still been dieting at the time and thus they never did allow their bodies to refeed back to maintenance. Thus, it's safe to say that if you experience adaptation on a moderate calorie deficit, you can simply reset your metabolism just by eating at maintenance calories for a few days or a week. And if you've been in an extreme deficit for a long time, like a year or longer, it may take a couple of months longer. Those who claim that their metabolism is impaired for good probably never truly ate at maintenance for long enough and thus were still in a deficit. But this only explains that metabolic adaptation is real and reversible. It doesn't explain to what extent your metabolism can slow down. Some people think it makes a massive difference, while others think it is so minimal a difference that it's irrelevant. The answer is likely in the middle somewhere. Lucy took the reins on researching this one. Well, findings vary. This review show adaptation rates as low as 5%, whereas at the extreme end, the famous Minnesota starvation experiment showed just a 15% decrease 
in resting metabolic rate. But on a whole, if we factor out any slowdowns in metabolism associated with BMI or body composition, it seems like your resting metabolic rate can likely decrease by 5 to 7 percent but it can go up to 15 percent depending on how extreme the deficit is basically it ended up being a big pile of it depends but at least we have some numbers to work with now it's time to match facts with anecdotes does the math justify the stories when i went back and looked at my students data and yes i did throw out all the data where inaccurate tracking was the cause of weight loss stalls 90% of the time when a student claims they're not making progress despite eating fewer calories, it's because they're not tracking everything. As coaches, we understand this. So for this investigation, I'm only looking at students who, one, claim to measure all foods whenever possible, including oils used in cooking, two, ate mostly packaged foods with nutrition labels or ate the same foods 80% of the time, and three, send us photos of what they ate so we can peer review calories for them. We also track their fat mass versus lean mass loss to make sure muscle loss wasn't a contributor to reduced calories burned. Assuming up to a 15% decrease in resting metabolic rate per Lucy's research, the data mostly lines up. For instance, one student stopped losing weight while eating 1400 calories despite her estimated calories burned to be 1670 at minimum. And if you assumed her body slowed down her resting metabolic rate 15% beyond what the calculator predicted, then her actual calories comes out to be close to what she was eating. This explains the weight loss stall. Another student's estimated calories burned was 1798, but despite eating 1500 calories, she's on no weight loss after the first couple of weeks. If you deduct 15% from her resting metabolic rate, her calories burned come out to be close to what she was eating too. Note, while 5-15% to won't make a huge difference for many people, it can make a big difference if you're on the shorter and older side, especially for women who have never built muscle, because you already have a lower TDE or total calories burned to begin with. But there were still some cases we couldn't explain. The math doesn't work out here though. What's that? Even with a 15% BMR decrease, she should still be making progress on 1100 calories here. Hmm. It says her progress tracking sheet uh, that she also was dealing with a lot of stress at the time and not sleeping well due. Do you think that has something to do with it? So I went on a mission to find out just how much of an impact sleep and stress can make. And the answer? Eh. While most research agrees that poor sleep can impair in metabolic functions, I couldn't find any research that says how that translates into calories burned. For all I know, it may only make a measly 1% difference. Same with chronic stress. Researchers agree that chronic stress can impair metabolic functions, but it's unclear how that translates into calories burned. This was getting me nowhere. I researched the same dead end each and every time. Ah. Of course, we have only focused on changes in resting and basal metabolic rates up to this point, which only make a portion of your TDE. What about the rest of it? We decided to go after NEAT next, since it has the most effect on daily calories burned after resting and basal metabolic rates. For those that don't know, NEAT includes calories burned from all the activities we do that aren't formal exercises, from daily activities like walking to work and typing to spontaneous unconscious activities like twitching or fidgeting that can make up a huge part of our total calories burned. In fact, one 2021 journal review claims that meat can make up as much as 15 to 50% of your daily calories burned, depending on how active you are. Lo and behold, studies show that spontaneous activity levels naturally decline when dieting, with meat potentially playing an even bigger role in metabolic adaptation than BMR. In the extreme case, one analysis estimates that meat decrease can account for 33 to 51% of the reduction in TDE while dieting. However, these numbers are likely overestimated, given that we don't know how much of this reduction is due to participants just naturally weighing less than they did before. So how much need reduced was again a big pile of, it depends. But we at least have some more numbers to work with now. To stay conservative, we decided to assume that need can reduce total calories burned by 15% since that's on the lower end of this range. Let's say her BMR decreased by 15% and uh, need to decrease by another 15% due to metabolic adaptation. So her total TDE would be less than 1100 calories a day, which would make sense uh, why she wasn't seeing progress eating at 1200 calories. What about Allie? Yep, that checks out too. 
The math, math works. works. <laughs> yes. Yes. Finally, we have an explanation. How come some people can't lose weight on so few calories? First, they may not be tracking honestly. 90% of the time, this is the case. However, it's also possible that their body has metabolically adapted to burning fewer calories, especially for shorter or older women already having a low resting metabolic rate to begin with. But it's not damaged. They can keep making progress if they decrease their calories even more or restoke their metabolism by just eating and maintenance for a bit. This explanation obeys the law of thermodynamics and is backed by science. Yet, I hesitate to say the last part because the danger of saying something is backed by science is people have a tendency to assume if science has evidence that something can happen, that means it will. Or the reverse, just because science doesn't have evidence that something can happen, they think it never will. But remember, there's a range for everything. And even then, there can still be exceptions we don't have research for because it's impossible for studies to account for every single variable that can affect every single person's energy balance equation. For instance, one of our students hit a plateau after a month of extreme calorie deficits and when she actually got a professional calimetry test, it said her resting metabolic rate was 26% less than predicted, a measly 1,209 calories for 200 pounds of woman, way above the 5 to 15% metabolic adaptation range for RMR we saw earlier. And we have many other students who are able to lose weight on huge deficits with no sign of metabolic slowdown for nearly a year. Calories in, calories out is always at play but it's a moving target and it'll move more for some people than others for reasons science can't 100% explain yet. What 100% works for everyone? Other than being a calorie deficit, we don't know exactly how much everything else makes a difference and it ultimately doesn't matter. What works for you? That's the only thing that matters. And to answer that question, we must combine existing scientific research with conducting the scientific method done on ourselves. How? First, honestly track what you're eating and how your body fat percentage changes week over week. You can use body fat measurement tools or just take your weight and body measurements and calculate your body fat percentage using this Navy calculator I'll link below. Then trial and error with different calorie intakes. I recommend starting with a 10 to 20% deficit from your theoretical TDE and pick activity level equal to sedentary. Do any exercise you're already doing, but don't add any new exercises during this time because you don't want to introduce new variables that can mess up your experiment. If after one to two weeks, you're losing fat, great. You don't need to change anything unless you want to lose fat faster and feel it's sustainable to lower calories even more. But if you're not losing fat and you're tracking everything meticulously, then try lowering your calories even more. If feeling too hungry, try adding more protein, fiber, and healthy fats to your diet while still staying within your calorie target. And if you absolutely cannot reduce calories any lower without feeling majorly burnt out, try eating at your theoretical maintenance for a week or so. Then go back into a deficit it right after. Now, if you've been in a severely calorie restricted diet for a year or longer or recovering from a long-term eating disorder, then it's likely you need to eat at maintenance for longer. You can keep experimenting with this yourself or I recommend seeing a registered dietitian for personal guidance rather than taking advice from YouTube, even if it's my channel. But there's one more important thing I didn't talk about and that's how sleep and exercise can help. While diet makes up most of the equation, there are other things that can boost your daily calories burned beyond just cycling between dieting and refeeding. But the priority in which you do these things depends on your individual needs. So two things. If you want a tried and tested proven system that teaches you how to prioritize what you need to do to lose fat smartly and sustainably, then check out the free sneak peek into my Badass Body Boss program in the comments and description below. Or if you want to DIY it, then you don't want to ignore this video where I reveal the 10 smartest ways to boost your metabolism using a combo of science, logic, and personal experience. No hacks, no nonsense. So check it out here. And always remember, you're not broken and you can do it.